Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to uh, another edition of our uh, Winter Kids Club here at the Aquarium of the Pacific. My name is Talia. Uh, I'm from our education department, so I'm so excited uh, to have you guys join us uh, this afternoon. Noon. Now, we would love to have you guys participate uh, as you're watching our program today. So there's a couple ways to do that. Um, if you're watching this live, um, you can text us in those questions and that number is right up on your screen to make sure if you're one of our younger viewers that you get your parents' permission because uh, texting rates do apply. Um, and those questions can be texted to the number, uh, which is 562-286-1838. Right down there, down below on your screen. Um, if you're not watching this live, if you've picked up this program a little bit later on, um, you're welcome to still email us those questions as well. So those emails um, are at live at LBAOP. Normally we'll answer those um, after we do our live programming. So um, I have a couple other friends in the studio here who are going to help me out today. I have Miss Carrie, who's going to be uh, changing all the fun um, images and videos that are happening behind me here. I also have Miss Amanda at another computer off to the side there, and she's going to be helping uh, bring in those live questions to me so we can uh, learn a little bit more about our topic today. So uh, my polar bear buddies, we are going to be learning about corals today, specifically corals and a little bit about their conservation story as well. So you might have noticed if you've watched some of our um, other programs today that we're on a little bit of a tropical vacation today uh, from our uh, winter theme. We, we figured it uh, might be nice to have a change of pace and go somewhere a little bit warmer today. Um, so we're going to be studying a little bit more about corals today. So um, right now behind me, I have a webcam of our coral reef exhibit. This is actually uh, our biggest exhibit here at the aquarium. Uh, and I want to take a moment uh, to make some observations about the coral reef. Kind of what do we notice? Um, and let's see what we see. I'm going to get, ooh, I just had a zebra shark go off to the side there. Uh, I'm going to get out of the way so you can see a little bit more about what's going on in there. I see some bubbles off to the side, so I wonder if some divers are in the exhibit. Maybe too. We might have some some other mammals joining us today in our webcam. Ah, Miss Carrie says it might actually be a, a bubble wall we have. So sometimes we'll use little bubbles to um, clean the uh, the glass. That might be what it is. That's a good observation, Miss Carrie. So I noticed one of the cool things about coral reefs is um, it's really diverse. There's lots and lots of different types of corals. Uh, there's different types of fish in there. Um, so I think that's one of the coolest things about uh, coral reefs is just how many different types um, of animals and, and other organisms can just show up um, in a single place in the ocean. So they're really, really cool to watch. Um, I noticed a couple of our sharks are coming by. We have some zebra sharks kind of a little bit towards the top of your screen there. Those are the ones with a really long tail. Also notice our Queensland grouper. Ooh, here come some bubbles. You are right, Miss Carrie. It is the bubble wall. <laughs> Got a Queensland grouper chilling on top of this tabletop coral. Actually, I noticed it is facing uh, a little vent too. So he must be uh, in the mood for, uh, for kind of a spa day there. Kind of like a little jacuzzi in your face. There's our, uh, our other species of shark as well. There goes our bonnet head, that guy over there, that little gray guy. Um, and that is a type of shark that's kind of like a hammerhead. It's in the same family, it's just the smallest mammals. There are definitely a lot of fish um, in our coral reef that we can see in our webcam here. Um, ooh, I got some coming towards the camera. Oh my goodness. Hi, hi snappers. <laughs> um, now, let's take a moment though, and hi, Stingray, um, to back up a little bit and let's focus on the coral itself because a lot of people see all these beautiful kind of rainbow structures behind me and they wonder a little bit more about what is coral is it is it a rock uh is it an animal is it a plant what is that stuff um and uh, here's a little bit more of up close view of uh one of our uh exhibits with some live coral in it you can see some of it kind of bending go this way so you can see it a little bit more kind of bending in the uh, the water flow here, um, and if you look at coral, um, you might notice. Actually, you can notice it a little bit more with the one that's kind of bending there. But um, you might notice it looks a little bit fluffy sometimes. 
Um, and if we look even closer, um, you might see, ooh, thank you, Miss Carrie. Good transition. Um, you might notice this. And these, do these remind you of anything? If you look at just one singular one, or it might remind you of something that's a little bit more local if you've ever been to some of our tide pools. Um, and it looks a little bit, um, I think, like a sea anemone. Um, and this is actually what makes up coral. Uh, this is called a polyp, and uh, it is an animal. So you can notice here that there are lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of these all very close together. So coral is considered a colonial animal. It's lots of little animals all living in sort of one structure. Um, so when we're looking at coral, um, we're kind of looking at, th think of it more of like um, an apartment building. So you have lots and lots of all these little animals living within that one structure. Um, and if we look at a coral skeleton, I actually have one here on my document camera. I need to go turn it on. So give me a moment to get the light on here. Let me see if I can zoom in so you can see their home a little bit better. I'm not sure if I picked the best piece to do this with, but let's let's give it a shot. I'm going to zoom in. Enhance. Enhance. That's pretty good. I'll turn the light down maybe just a touch. That's pretty good. Okay, this worked. Yay! Okay, so this is what a coral skeleton looks like. So I want you to picture in your head the picture we saw before with all the coral polyps. And do you see how this kind of looks a little bit similar. All of these little holes is where all those little kind of tentacly parts of the polyp would poke out. So they kind of poke out of the structure, eat some lunch, tuck back in. Um, and this is what their skeleton looks like when there's no more coral inside. It looks like you can see kind of that pattern still of where all the little polyps would be sticking out. Um, now, we think of our skeletons as humans. Our skeletons are on the inside of our body. Um, with corals, it's a little bit different. Their skeleton, they make their skeleton on the outside of their body. So it's kind of more like a protective shell. They secrete uh, chemicals that sort of harden around them, and that's how they get sort of like the little apartments uh, in your apartment building here. Um, now, one thing I haven't discussed yet is so not only are corals, coral polyps, animals, uh, they are not alone in their apartment. They actually share their space, their tissue, um, with sort of a roommate. Uh, a roommate, and this roommate is an algae, so it's a little bit um, like a plant, but a little bit simpler than that. And it is called zooxanthellae. It has a very, very, very long name, so you can impress all your friends with the big word you learned today. Um, and if you look closely at this coral polyp, I believe the zooxanthellae uh, can kind of be seen within the tissues of the coral here. I believe, is it, am I correct that it's all the kind of brown splotches? Miss Carrie says, yes, ma'am. Um, so, all these brown, brown kind of splotches you see in the tissue of the coral, that's all that zooxanthellae here. So they kind of live together and it's kind of a win-win situation. So the uh, zooxanthellae, uh, like a plant, wood is getting energy from the sun and providing kind of sugar and energy and food for the coral. And then the since the zooxanthellae is housed within the tissue of the coral, that's how keeping uh, the zooxanthellae safe. Um, another cool thing about these guys is that um, they are what give the coral all their beautiful colors. So different zooxanthellae live in different corals, and that's how you get different colors of coral, which I think is pretty interesting and pretty cool. That, that's how we get that kind of rainbow effect of corals. Um, so that's a little bit about sort of what makes a coral a coral. Um, and I think I want to actually change it up a little bit. I'm going to keep Carrie on her toes here. And I want to take a moment to talk a little bit about a particular animal that lives in the coral reef. And I'm wondering if we can look real quick at, um, at a fish. Uh, with a particular mouth. Sure. Sorry, I'm changing, changing things a little whim here. You look at all the beautiful polyps waving, waving good afternoon to us. Okay, so this is another one of our webcams here. 
Um, and this is one well, hello <laughs> about uh, this particular. Oh, that was really great. Thanks, buddy. Um, this particular type of fish. Uh, and you might have noticed they're all like going for my head right now. <laughs> That's my theme. Ah! <laughs> That's my theme today, is fish are going for my head. Um, anyways, this particular type of fish um, is uh, called a parrotfish. If you look closely at their beak, does that name make a little bit more sense? Uh, so not only are they very, very colorful, you can see that these are just about as rainbow as the corals that are around them. Uh, but their beak is what makes them particularly special. So it's really strong. Scientists saw that and said, that sure looks like a parrot beak. Um, and that actually allows them to eat coral. So they're not eating the hard structure that's around them. They're trying to crunch through all that. And that's why their beak's so strong. Um, and that allows them, hello, Mr. Parrotfish or Mrs. Parrotfish. Um, that allows them to break through that skeleton to get to all those squishy polyps uh, inside. So they're a really interesting animal. Uh, that lives within the coral reef. Now you might think, oh no, is it eating all the corals? Um, it's not eating everything, but it's kind of performing an important job. So what it's doing is by eating the coral, a couple of things. One, it's helping make sure there's enough space on coral reefs so that new corals can grow. So if you think of sometimes uh, forest will get uh, um, kind of Part of it will um, will either die or there will be uh, a, a burn off or something like that. Uh, but that allows new growth to come into that area. So parrotfish can oftentimes have a very uh, similar role to that. Um, another cool thing that parrotfish do, it's a little gross, um, is that uh, while they're digesting all that coral, they are getting some of that coral skeleton in their mouth, but they're not really eating it. Um, so it does come out the other end uh, and it does come out as sand. So you can thank parrotfish for giving sand. Now, not necessarily the sandy beaches that we find here in California. That's more for uh, from soil erosion, rock erosion, things like that. But if you've been to a ni nice kind of tropical beach, um, more towards like Hawaii, things like that, a lot of that sand uh, is thanks to our lovely parrotfish here. So that's that's uh, your, your fun fact for the day. So we talked a little bit about coral. Uh, we talked a little bit about... Um, some of the animals that call the coral reef their home. But we also want to talk a little bit today, uh, more specifically, about uh, the conservation of coral. Because coral um, is pretty a pretty fragile thing. It can be affected by a couple of different things. Um, one of the things it can be affected by is temperature. Uh, it likes to be kind of in sort of uh, what you might call Goldilocks conditions. It doesn't want it, the water to be too hot. It doesn't want it to be the water too cold, even though it lives in a tropical place. So the water here in our exhibits here is probably about in the in the 70s or so. So it doesn't want it to be uh, too much hotter than that, even though it already lives in pretty warm water. If you've ever been um, scuba diving in tropical places, uh, it kind of feels like bath water. It's actually pretty nice, but they don't want it too hot. They don't want it too cold. And one of the things that's happening uh, in the world that you might have heard of before is uh, climate change. So um, the temperatures of the uh, world are changing thanks to uh, carbon dioxide going into the ocean. Um, they're assuming going into the air. Uh, and a lot of that is coming back into uh, the ocean. And that's causing the waters to uh, warm up a little bit. Uh, because of, um, I'll back up, so uh, the carbon dioxide is kind of making a blanket around the earth. Have you ever been uh, kind of snuggled up with a bunch of blankets? Sometimes you get too many blankets on you and you're like, ooh, this is getting a little bit too toasty, but the earth can't really kick off those layers of blankets uh, very well unless um, certain steps take place. So that's causing the temperature of the air to be a lot warm. It's also affecting the temperature uh, of the water as well. Um, another thing with that carbon dioxide uh, is that it's coming into the water, like I mentioned before, it's actually causing the water to be a little bit more acidic than it used to be. And that's causing those hard skeletons, uh, like we saw in my document camera, uh, to not be able to be as easily formed anymore. So that's some of the things uh, that are affecting uh, corals. And again, if you guys have any questions uh, during our program today, please feel free uh, to text those questions in. I think we'll get our number back up on our screen there. In case in case you have anything that you're wondering about, you saw something today, you went, hmm, I want to know a little bit more about that. Uh, and you can text that number right there on your screen, 
1-800-273-1838 if you guys are wondering about anything during our program today. Um, so coral can be affected uh, by a lot of different things and you might wonder what can we do to help? What are ways that we can make sure that coral stick around? Because they're not only just beautiful places, um, they're a home for a lot of different animals. As you can see with uh, our antheas back here, this is a particular type of fish. I think that's uh, that's hanging out on uh, on our reef here. We got a little butterfly fish, too, or excuse me, a yellow tang going that way. Um, so they're not only a home for a lot of different animals, they act as uh, feeding grounds, they act as nurseries. So a lot of animals will lay eggs within the uh, the uh, structures of the coral there. So it's really important uh, that we kind of make sure that they stick around and um, help fight um, all the benefits that they can. Ooh, another thing um, that they um, can provide that you might not realize is we get a lot of medicines from the ocean as well. So scientists have been finding compounds in coral that help with a lot of different uh, research as well in the medical field. So again, really, really important that we keep them around. Uh, one thing that we could do uh, is kind of create safe spaces for the coral. If you guys have heard of kind of a national park, um, we essentially can make national parks um, in the water and they're called marine protected areas. So we'll preserve pieces of the ocean and uh, we'll say, okay, we can't really take things from this area, fish things from this area. And that'll either A, um, allow uh, things to recover if perhaps it was an area that was uh, heavily affected by, by one thing or the other. It also can, again, make sure that those areas uh, stick around. So that's definitely something uh, that we can support. And then there's different projects uh, that we can help out as well to help out coral scientists. Um, one of the things that um, we've been doing here at the aquarium is we've been helping out a, a group of coral scientists uh, in a program called Sea Core. And we've actually been helping with sort of replanting coral reefs in uh, the ocean. So uh, a while back, uh, we worked with the scientist. We got little the little coral polyps. Uh, they got to hang out here at the aquarium, grow up nice and strong, and we put them on little structures that kind of look like a tripod. I'm going to go grab one here and bring it back. Let me see if that works well. Yeah, you can see that pretty well. I'll do it that way so you can see, distinguish it a little bit more from my hand and my jacket there. But it kind of looks, say again, Oh, yeah, um, sure. Uh, Miss Carrie can put up some photos as well. So they kind of look, ooh, that's a much better picture than this. They kind of look like this, but they look a whole lot more like this stuff behind me as well. I'm going to put this off to the side so you guys can see this. So this is what these little tripods look like. So we can encourage, you can actually see it a little bit there, I think, too. You can encourage these polyps to grow on these structures here. And then scientists, once these get to like a certain size or so, scientists can take these guys back to the wild reefs and uh, they can grow up in sort of little kind of hanging structures like this. They can actually start um, putting them within the wild reefs as well. And they're sort of just sort of embed themselves into the structures that are already there. And what's cool about this design I've heard is that um, they kind of just self wedge themselves into those reef structures. You don't have to go with like a special glue and put it down or anything and add more chemicals uh, into the water that way you could kind of like I, I think you could almost just like throw them like like uh, jumping jacks there and um, or jacks that you play with uh, and uh, they sort of embed themselves in the reef structure. That's a really cool program that we've been we've been part of here at the aquarium to help uh, coral reefs uh, recover a little bit in, in the wild in addition to having those marine protected areas where you can actually start to replant different sections of the reef as well using these kind of techniques uh, like they've uh, they've uh, discovered here with sea core. Um, now another way to help out coral scientists is just to get more information, right? If we don't know what's going on in a certain area, uh, it's a little bit harder maybe to protect it as best as we could. So another um, group that we work with here at the aquarium and I um you can definitely I think watch their videos online you may even be able to participate online as well is with a group called Finprint uh, and they've discovered a really cool camera uh technique that they've uh used to help them study all sorts of different coral reefs around the world um so you might notice that these fish are pretty interested Ooh, I did get my backwards pointing today pretty interested with this box here uh, now, this box is part of a camera system called a BRUV. It's a baited remote underwater video. So this little box is filled with bait. Is, ooh, there goes some sharks. Whoosh! Um, 
is filled with bait, uh, so it's some food to attract animals over there. And that box is attached to like a pole, and that pole's on a little tripod, a little sort of triangle guy, like uh, kind of looks like what our, our coral things grow on. Um, and there's a little camera attached to that, and they can set these systems up in different reefs and then watch and see what happens and see um, what types of fish are there. How many of those fish are there? How many different types of fish are there? How are they interacting? Um, and they can gain a lot more information uh, about these different reefs all over the world uh, just by looking um, at these cameras here. And this is a lot easier way to gather information about these reefs because um, it would be a lot harder if you had to get scuba deer, get on a boat, get over to the reef, jump in the reef, get on the water, have an underwater, you know, pen and paper and take notes all day. And, you know, the fish might be like, ooh, I don't know if I want to go over there because there's this strange, this strange human. Uh, oh my goodness, fish are just... <laughs> Carrie, why are fish going for my head today? <laughs> that one was was very particular. <laughs> oh my goodness. Anyways, um, it's a lot harder to do that um, if you have kind of a, a more of a human element per se in terms of like sitting there. How much air do I have? How long is that going to last? Is the fish behavior going to change? Uh, you know, a, a whole lot because I'm sitting there taking notes. Um, so by using these baited um, cameras, they can essentially kind of set it and then see what happens. And this way, again, we can gather more information uh, about these types of places. Um, and by gathering that information, we can figure out, ooh, you know, is there a type of animal here or plant here that, you know, we didn't notice before? And ooh, that's something we really want to protect. Um, is this a breeding ground for a certain type of animal? We didn't realize that before. Um, these are all those sort of questions we can start answering as we get more and more information, uh, thanks to these baited uh, underwater camera systems. Um, and then what they can do, and I think some of our volunteers at the aquarium used to do this as well, is we can take these big long videos that they record and we can start helping them gather that information, gather that data. So we can start writing down, oh, okay, we're seeing this type of fish and this type of shark. And um, these are how many we saw during this period of time. And as we gather that information, uh, that can help coral scientists and scientists in general uh, figure out, okay, what are these areas that we need to help protect out uh, in our oceans? Um, so that's a little bit more about uh, the corals, about the conservation um, efforts that have uh, been going on to help them out um, and a little bit about some of the animals that are here, uh, are that live in a coral uh, and call it their home. You can also notice there's quite a lot of sharks uh, in this video as well. So sharks are definitely another type of fish that coral, the coral, their home. I think this is a type of reef shark that's hanging out behind me. I don't know if these are, oh, there's a black tip reef shark. Thanks, black tip reef shark for coming by. <laughs> um, you can tell it's a black tip reef shark because it has a black tip on its fin there. Very cool. And then there are some, like, maybe some white tips or some gray tips, uh, gray reef sharks in there as well. Ooh, I had a great question come in. Does the aquarium grow corals? Ooh, that is a fantastic question. So we do um, grow our own corals here. At so we do have some live uh, coral exhibits. Ah, thank you. Um, so we do basically take little pieces of coral uh, from live corals that we have here at the aquarium. We'll take little pieces of them uh, and grow them up in the back. This is kind of one of our behind the scenes area where we can let these little pieces of coral, and sometimes they're really tiny, they're only like a couple inches big, um, and we can sort of have them grow up in the back. Um, you can see there's, again, I, that's one of the cool things about, not only are there a lot of different fish here at the aquarium, uh, the, in reefs with all sorts of different colors, just all sorts of different types of corals themselves. You can just see even in this little video here, there's just all sorts of different shapes and sizes and colors. But anyways, we can grow them up in the back here and then we can take just little pieces um, and put them in some of our exhibits here at the aquarium, like this one. Uh, so this is a uh, part of uh, our live coral exhibit here at the aquarium. And I believe one of, the, I think it might be this piece here. 
but don't quote me, one of these pieces, um, I believe, is from the very beginning of the aquarium. So corals can grow a really, really, really long time sometimes. But yeah, we can take little chunks of these pieces, grow them up in the back, um, and then we can start adding more live coral uh, to our exhibits um, around the aquarium as well. Um, some of our larger exhibits here at the aquarium do contain artificial um, coral just because it's uh, like uh, our bigger exhibit here, this artificial coral here. Don't, don't tell the fish, they don't know. Um, but it just is a little bit easier to maintain when you have a, a larger exhibit where you're going to have divers come in. They're not going to be worried about bumping into that because again, we mentioned that coral um, can be pretty fragile. So we don't want to be accidentally, you know, knocking into things. Um, so sometimes in our larger exhibits, it's easier to have sort of replicated coral um, in this exhibit. You might notice though that some of them are very lovely very lovely colors here. We actually had um, a while back, we had some friends uh, repaint some of the coral here. So we try to be green here uh, with our uh, artificial coral as well. And sometimes we'll try to repaint them and sort of refresh that look. So it looks a little bit more like what you see out in the wild as well, but they do a really good job. So a lot of the fish, they'll still act around the same as they would the real deal. They'll still, uh, you know, have their home in there, lay their eggs in there. Our zebra sharks will sometimes lay their eggs uh, in the corals that are a little bit more spiky, like the stag corn coral then. Actually, I should point to the one that's easier to see, like those guys right there. Sometimes they'll circle, 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 and uh, wrap their eggs in there as well. So, so they're still going to act around it, uh, just like they would uh, the real deal as well. Um, now, my friends, I am um, so glad that you guys joined us here this afternoon to learn a little bit more about the coral, a little bit more about the friends that call it their home. Uh, as well as uh, some of the things that are being done to help keep them safe, uh, learn a little bit more about them, and uh, maybe even some things that you guys can uh, look into at home, like that global uh, fin print as well. Um, there goes our zebra shark up there. That's the one that likes to lay eggs in the coral, and there goes our bonnet head shark. As well. Oops, somebody bumped the camera. <laughs> I wonder if a big fish came by. But yeah, I, th I swear some of these fish kind of know where it is, and they definitely go and uh and then check it out there comes our spade fish over there one of them likes to play in the divers bubbles it's pretty fun so yeah they're definitely some fun fish here at the aquarium so i hope you guys um Ooh, all right so um we had a great question coming about what are some everyday things we can do uh to help out with the coral so um some of the things we can do sort of more every day um, is hopefully some of the things you guys are already doing. So uh, one of the things that affects uh, corals, like we talked about, is uh, things that happen in the water. So reducing the amount of pollution that gets in there can help out. So things like uh, picking up our trash, recycling, using reusable um, products can help out as like kind of a first step. Um, another thing that I didn't mention yet that can kind of affect corals as well as they've been finding that certain chemicals in sunscreen uh, can be harmful to corals. So uh, looking a little bit more into that, uh, maybe trying to find a sunscreen if you can um, that doesn't contain those chemicals. That's a, a sort of an everyday thing uh, we can uh, think about with kind of spring and, and summer kind of coming on, on the horizon. There's some good information uh, about that on the web. Uh, and then um, more sort of long-term things we can do to help out is uh, choosing things uh, that would be reducing um, our carbon footprint. So reducing them out of uh, carbon dioxide that goes up in the atmosphere and that's going to be affecting things like climate change. So um, things uh, that can help like with that is, is sort of like reusing reusable products. Uh, if you have the opportunity to not drive as much. Maybe you can walk to the store, plan your car trips more efficiently so you're not going back to the fourth in the store. Um, a million times trying to walk, ride our bike, um, choosing types of cars that uh, are more uh, fuel efficient. Um, those are some other things we can do to uh, to help out with climate change and then thus help out with uh, coral reefs. So I hope that helps with uh, some of the uh, more everyday things that you guys can do to help out with corals, depending on if you're kind of a kid or a grown up. Uh, but everybody can help. I think that's one of the important things is, is you everybody can help out the ocean um, and it can always start with something small and kind of work our way up to bigger steps as well. And also sharing your knowledge is a way to help. If we don't understand a place, if we, um, you know, don't understand why is this place so cool, um, 
it's um, sometimes it's harder to uh, figure out why we want to protect it. So definitely sharing all the cool things you guys know about the ocean and the corals is another fun way to help it out. So I hope you guys learned a little bit more about our uh, coral reefs and things we can do to help out. Um, and again, if you guys have more questions after the program, you can email us. And that email is still up on our screen here. It's live at lbaop.org. We are just about out of time. So thank you for joining us today on our tropical vacation here at our uh, Winter Kids club Ooh, and if you still want to do some more fun things at home and use your scientist brains we do have a take-home activity for you my polar bear buddies so if you go to our website aquariumofpacific.org you can look right below this uh, video here there should be a link to a uh coral comparison activity so it's going to be using our webcams kind of like what we've been doing here in class uh or excuse me during our club today and uh trying to learn a little bit more about uh the corals there so you're encouraged to Check that out. If you want to share your adventures, you can also use the hashtag um, 